Bacteria are typically thought of as unicellular, but in nature, many, if not most, bacteria form specialized surface-attached communities called biofilms. This micrograph depicts a biofilm of bacteria collected from a rock surface in a Yellowstone hot spring. Even in aquatic environments, bacteria are found mainly associated with surfaces. Plaque is a biofilm that forms on teeth. Biofilms play critical roles in microbial pathogenesis and environmental quality and cost the nation billions of dollars each year in equipment damage, product contamination, and medical infections. Most biofilms in nature are consortia of several species, but in some situations, single-species biofilms can form. For example, the gram-negative bacterium Pseudomonas aeruginosa can form a single-species biofilm in the lungs of cystic fibrosis patients. Single-species biofilms are also readily formed in the laboratory. The first stage of biofilm formation occurs when a specific environmental signal induces a genetic program in free-living planktonic cells. In response to the signal, the planktonic cells begin to attach to nearby surfaces by means of flagella, pili, lipopolysaccharides, or other cell surface appendages. The attached cells begin to coat that surface with an organic monolayer of polysaccharides or glycoproteins, to which more planktonic cells can attach. As the cells enter into biofilm formation, they no longer maintain their flagella and instead may move along surfaces using a twitching motility that involves the extension and retraction of a specific type of pilus. Ultimately, they stop moving and firmly attach to the surface. As more and more cells bind to the surface and divide, they form microcolonies and can begin to communicate with each other by sending and receiving chemical signals in a process called quorum sensing. These chemical signal molecules are continually made and secreted by individual cells. Once the population reaches a certain number, analogous to an organizational quorum, the chemical signal reaches a specific concentration that the cells can sense. This concentration triggers genetically regulated changes that cause cells to bind tenaciously to the substrate and to each other. Quorum sensing may influence the amount of extracellular matrix produced by the cells. This thick, slimy material consists of polysaccharide polymers called exopolysaccharides and entrapped organic and inorganic materials. The extracellular matrix protects the cells from damage from environmental assaults. Quorum sensing serves the biofilm in many ways, such as by increasing the resistance of biofilms to antibiotics. Quorum sensing in Pseudomonas aeruginosa plays a role in the maturation of the biofilm into complex three-dimensional forms, such as columns and streamers, forming channels through which nutrients flow. Sessile cells in a biofilm chemically talk to each other in order to build microcolonies and keep water channels open. Biofilms tend to form where nutrients are plentiful and may begin to dissolve when nutrients become limiting. Little is known about how a biofilm dissolves, although the process is thought to be triggered by starvation. Pseudomonas aeruginosa produces an enzyme that can strip away the exopolysaccharides. Cells leaving the biofilm revert to their flagellated planktonic forms and can swim to new locations where nutrients are more plentiful. Pseudomonas aeruginosa can be medically devastating. It forms biofilms in susceptible individuals, such as in the lungs of patients with cystic fibrosis, and on medical implants.